Hey there guys, TC Babe with TC Gaming. Today's video for the RPG series, we're going to talk a little bit about something called an event dispatcher. Now in previous videos, we discussed uh, interfaces, and an interface and an event dispatcher are kind of similar. What we did in the, um, in the interfaces, we asked everything around us if they had the interact interface on it, and then if it did, we were able to trigger whatever the behavior was that we wanted from a common function. What an event dispatcher does that's a little bit different is it's actually, it sets up a uh, a listener on uh, kind of like a broadcast. So uh, the dispatcher itself can call the event and then everything that's listening for that event to happen responds to it however you want it to. So different things can respond in different ways to the same event. You could have, uh, you know, like, picture the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom scenario or whatever, and, uh, you know, he goes and he takes the idol, and then the large stone starts to roll away. You know, you could have an event dispatcher that says whenever that object has been removed or interacted with or whatever to trigger some other event. And the the boulder's just laying there waiting to be activated. And the reason we do this is because we might have multiple things that we want to interact with. Let's say um, you have a thing where when the character dies, you know, and you want to go and reset a bunch of variables and restart a level and, um, you know, maybe load a previously saved game or restart a checkpoint or something like that, all those different things you would have to, you know, sequentially and progressively cast to and get references from and all that kind of stuff. But you could just have an event handler that says, whenever I dispatch the player's dead event, if you hear that come out across the, the broadcast, then go and you know, respond accordingly. So, going back into our thing that we did last time with the show, Base Thirst, what we'll do is we'll go through here, and we're going to go and add a, an event dispatcher into our attributes component. Now, you can put these where, you know, in different places, but I'm just going to do it in here, and we might clean this up when we actually get into building the, the demo level, you know, for the RPG. But for now, since we're going to listen to an event, I'm going to put that where the event actually gets uh, changed on the other thing. So in this last example, I was showing base thirst, and then I was modifying thirst, and then I put that on an event timer uh, with a set timer by function name where we were draining thirst. So we're going to kind of leverage that a little bit. And the way that these dispatchers work is you set the dispatcher up to trigger and then on the thing that's listening to it, you bind to that. And you typically do it when you begin the level or on this event begin play. So we're going to open up our AC Attributes component and go in there and set that up. Okay, so if you remember previously, our AC Attributes component's actually in our folder down here where we have all of our uh, RPG stuff that we're playing around with. We have it in this RPG content folder our AC Attributes, which is, again is an actor component. So we're going to go into that. And what we want to do is we have this modify thirst uh, thing that we set up last time. We're going to go into the section that says event dispatchers. And we're going to hit the plus button here and create a new event dispatcher. And I'm going to call this um, thirst. Oops, caps locks on. I'm going to call this thirst modified. Now, obviously, we know it's modified because we asked it to be modified, but. We're going to tell everybody else that we modified it. So this is how we do it. So we take this event dispatcher, just create something called thirst modified. For this example, we pull it out, and we want to call that event. Now you can see on there when you pull that out, you have all kinds of different options. You can call, you can bind, you can unbind or unbind all. Now if you were look, looking at this someplace else, you also have the ability to um, assign and some other things, but you can't do it here because this is where you're actually creating it. So we're just going to call it. And uh, we're going to set it in between the here, whoops, in between here and the uh, return node. <clears throat> so technically what should happen in this example is every time this timer clicks to go and drain the thirst, like every 10 seconds this runs out, hits the drain thirst function in our AC attributes over here, we're going to call the drain, I'm sorry, in the Greystone player character, it's going to hit this uh, drain thirst event modify thirst or wherever we had it. Actually it's drain thirst here gets called into this function called drain thirst which calls the modify thirst 
sets the amount that we want to drain it by or modify it by. That goes out to our AC attributes and fires this modify thirst sequence, which is going to go in here and add whatever amount we wanted to drain, take it off of our base value, and now we're going to call the thirst modified dispatch and send that out to everybody else who's listening. Now in this case, we're just going to put on the Greystone player character, he's going to listen to whether or not his thirst has hit a certain level. So when we go out to our event graph here, we're going to um, create, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to create another pin. So we're going to subscribe to that event. So we'll add pin here after these other sequences are fired. We're going to come over here and we're going to do a, um, we want to set up a, a binding to that event. So actually we'll, we'll just pull off AC attributes because AC attributes has the thirst modified on there. And you see in here there's a thing that says um, bind event to thirst modified. So I'll just hit that, and now we have this little binding we can do, and we'll come off of here and set that up. So whenever the level or the, the game starts, we're going to set up all these other things, and then we'll come over here and set up a binding to listen for modified thirst. And then what these do is every time that thirst gets modified, I'm going to put a comments around here, and we'll just call this, uh, call this uh, event dispatchers just so we know what we're working with where it's at. Every time this event triggers this this uh, call, we can fire an event. And so we're going to create a custom event just by typing in CUST. We'll add a custom event. And this will be like uh, check for thirst zero, for example. And let's say that in our game, whenever our thirst reaches zero, we just die. Um, you could also have a thing where, you know, in an RPG scenario, you could say that if my thirst goes to zero, so I haven't consumed enough water, then what I want to do is I want to progressively start to reduce my health until I die. So I have that buffer of whatever my health is. Um, start removing from that, or maybe I say if I'm overly dehydrated or thirsty or whatever, my stamina starts to deplete, or maybe both of those things happen, and that's why you would use this type of thing. Like, once that thirst modification hits a certain level, let's do all these things. So, here we're going to check for thirst zero, and to do that, we would come off of the same attribute here, because that's where our thirst value is for the character. So, we come over here and we get um, get thirst. And out of that thirst value, we can pull this off and we can break that. And we can look at our base value. That's what we've been modifying here. And what we're going to do is check to see if this base value is uh, less than or equal to a certain thing. So we'll come out of here and you can just say um, hit the shift key and the less than symbol, which is uh, just above your alt key slightly to the left there with the... Um, with the, um, well, it's a less than symbol, and then it's got like a, I can't think of the name of it right now, but anyway, we're going to do less than or equal to zero. Um, actually, we're going to go come off of the base value here and say less than or equal to, so it knows that we're looking at a value there. All right, so if this value is, yeah, I pulled it off the execution pin, which is not right. The, if this value is less than or equal to something, it's going to return a Boolean true. So we want to go over here and say if, which is going to give us a branch. So if that condition is true, if this is less than or equal to zero at any time that we've checked this, and basically we're going to check it every time it gets modified, which is, again, set by those timers. If at any point in time this is true, let's just go ahead and do two things. We'll come off the true here and we'll say um, we'll print a string say you have died of thirst and then also we'll just do a simple uh, destroy our character now you know you could have a more elaborate death and we'll talk about death in another um, episode because character death for RPGs and for games where you're going to be able to reload and all that kind of stuff but basically any game you don't really kill the character, typically, but in this case we're going to say destroy actor, and we can just leave the target on this itself because we're inside a Greystone player character, and that's what we're trying to destroy. So, again, what will happen is every 
cycle of the clock up here, this timer, will go and drain our thirst, and it'll continue to drain our thirst until we hit zero. And once we hit zero, then we're going to um, basically, once this check evaluates, it's going to say you've died of thirst to destroy our actor. And so we can expedite this event by going into this drain thirst function, and then in this drain thirst, we'll set up this modify amount. And we'll just say we'll do this like at negative 10. And I go back out here and give us a little space to see. Now, when I die, because I'm just destroying the actor, what is going to happen is my character will just disappear from the screen and my gameplay will stop. So that's how we'll know that we're dead. And again, I can hit the I key to show my thirst level. And let's see. There we go. We're going down to 90. And I have this I have this cycle in every 10 seconds, so it would it would take us a little while. Um, but let's go back in here and we'll just expedite this a little bit for the sake of this. So we're gonna say we want to cycle this every let's do every one second. Every one second we're gonna take off 10 points of health from our 100. So I'll hit I, I'm at 90, 80, 70, and I'm just gonna run around. We know that it's clocking down, and I'll just disappear here in a second because I've died of thirst. Boom. You have died of thirst. You can see it up there in the upper left-hand corner. Okay? So I'm going to leave you with that basic example in your head, and you can go back and study this a little bit. And then in other episodes, we can talk about, again, coming out of that, you know, event for the death or whatever, where we could do multiple things or, um, again, character death, where normally what you do in a lot of those games is you would just simply suspend gameplay and uh, make the character invisible but you you know you can't act, act with it anymore so you kind of shut off the ability to control it um, and then what you do is you make the character invisible you take it back to whatever the spawn point is and then you um, do whatever you want to do to you know quote unquote reset the character and then flip him back into a visible state the reason you normally do that is because by destroying the actor you're also destroying all the things that were on that actor. So if you were storing variables and, and you know, uh, how, like how many coins he had picked up or what his current high score was or whatever was, you know, was on that thing, also gets destroyed with that. And instead of having to do a bunch of save games and restore these values or whatever, it's quite simpler in most cases to say, I want to preserve these things and, just, and reset those. So I'm just going to hide the character and I'm going to reset these other little values in here, not touch anything else, turn them back on. He still has all of his inventory where he was last time. He still got his gold, uh, his, you know, number of coins he's collected, yada, yada, yada. But I've reset you know, his experience that he gained in that level or whatever, because he never made it to the checkpoint. Just giving you arbitrary examples, but hopefully you get the idea. So again, <clears throat> just a real quick wrap up on this. Event dispatchers, we went to AC attributes, we created an event dispatcher called Thirst Modified, which is really just a reference. We pulled that out and we called that every time we modified our thirst. Our thirst modification, every time it got uh, triggered, we went up here and we added a sequence in to bind to this, and we're listening to it, listening to it, listening to it. Every time it changes, we check it to see if it is less than or equal to zero, right? And if it is less than or equal to zero at any time, that condition becomes true. We print the string, you have died, and destroy our actor. So again, basic example, event dispatchers can be useful for a lot of things. This is just one thing to get you started with it. But again, imagine all the other things I talked about before. You go over and you open up a chest and that triggers the enemy boss to, you know, to spawn. And he's just sitting there waiting and listening for that chest to get triggered, you know. So it's a, an easy way to, to create that. And again, uh, you wouldn't have to have an array of all these different objects to say, hey, can that thing be triggered by this event? Can that thing be triggered by this event? Can that thing be triggered by this event? You don't want to do that. You just want to say, if you want to know about this event, you subscribe to it early on in your event begin play. You're subscribing to this event, basically binding to it, and then listing for it, okay? So if you have any questions on these kinds of things, again, my Discord links are in the video. You can always stop by Discord and hit me up. I'm typically online, um, or not online, but available uh, most of the time from like 7 a.m. to like about 3.30 or 4 o'clock, maybe even a little bit later on the East Coast of the United States. And uh, I'm always more than happy to try and help you out if I can if you're stuck. So thanks again for tuning in. My name is TC Made with TC Gaming, and I will catch you in another 
RPG video coming up pretty soon. Um, future episodes will include things like adding HUDs to the screen so that we can actually see these values. We're going to start to create items so that we can actually modify some of our stats and attributes when we pick certain things up or be able to replenish our thirst when we drink water, you know, uh, or eat food or things like that. So again, all these are the intents of these videos are to give you these fundamental skills that you're going to need to build RPGs. And I'm trying to give you all the fundamental skill stuff up front so that when we go to compile it together at the end, it's a little bit easier to get through. All right. Hopefully these are giving you guys that foundation. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in a future episode.